Many viewers, including Wes Anderson fans, believe that he overdid what he does in his latest film, French Dispatch, and reduced this magnificent film to something only good on visuals and, well, countless stars. In this video, we will talk about why French Dispatch, considering director's personal style, is one of his best works yet, if not the best one, and how you could relate to it a bit better. Wes Anderson, famed American director and screenwriter, is a true auteur of today's cinema. His colorful and childish world is easily distinguishable and is his signature. And his visual language and narrative system, which Anderson has been working on and developing since his first film, has matured so and found a specific form that just seeing a frame of his films is enough to guess the name of the director. A frame so obsessively symmetrical, full of bright and warm colors, hyper-realistic recreation of comic strips, and a child's idealistic, colorful vision. French Dispatch is the last and updated example of Wes's personal style, and is a truly obsessive and complex work. Therefore, it may be his hardest film to relate to, especially if you're not familiar with American pop culture, since as we will talk about, the film is immensely based on this culture in every aspect. French Dispatch includes four separate news reports from a local magazine in Kansas, United States. The magazine itself is based on the real-life magazine, The New Yorker. It includes an introduction and an epilogue about the magazine and its chief editor. Just try to make it sound like you wrote it that way on purpose. Autor is an adjective used in cinema criticism to describe filmmakers who have a special worldview and a unique method in filmmaking. These are usually creative artists who, from their first movie on, have a set of topics in mind and try to create a special form in cinematic language. A form that can present their worldview in the best way possible. So in later films, with filmmaker getting more mature in his life and artistic experience, this style gets better and better. Probably this saying from Jean Renoir, the great French filmmaker, is one of the best descriptions of the author. All filmmakers make just one movie. The rest is repeating the first one. Best works of an auteur are just reiteration of the same old ideas and context, but composed better in the latest one. The same goes for Wes Anderson too. Anderson's unique style is based on popular stories, especially the ones that target children and teenagers, familiar characters and comedy situations, and beautiful and colorful compositions which have been leveled with millimeter accuracy. I knew there was something fishy. We never got the cause of death. She's been murdered. And you think I did it. Hey! This style has made almost all of his films, and each film, compared to last one, seems director has been more successful in adapting this style. This persistence on the personal style in French Dispatch is so that it sounds like the artist is on the verge of madness. For an audience unfamiliar with this personal style and its development, it may be really hard to get into French Dispatch. Narrative tropes and visual elements in Wes's latest film are completely based on pop culture and works of artists before him, and are totally impersonal. Yet these elements, thousands of them, have been so condensed in French Dispatch that though they belong to the history of cinema and pop culture, they make up one of the most personal films of his as of yet. After all, which crazy artist can make such a soup of madness with ingredients from all kinds of Western media, popular police fiction, and superhero comics, to modern painting, cooking, TV reality shows, classic cinema, and so on. And this isn't all. All this has been combined and served in a high tempo, full of colorful dialogues, all of which, themselves, are highly based on the specific linguistic of each group. Let's write it together. Um, right, what? The, the obituary. obituary. Maybe all these qualities are what makes the film hard to get for many, especially audiences from non-English or non-Wester countries. In the rest of this video, we introduce some elements and features of Wes Anderson's style so that it may be a key to enter his worlds of madness. This key may be knowing a bit about a major style of contemporary art known as postmodernism, which Wes Anderson's cinema 
perfectly fits in. Postmodernism is a reaction to modernism, a mockery or satire of the modernist art. This reaction was formed around the 60s and against modernist rationality and its absolute theories. Modernity marks the height of the mankind's confidence in his rational abilities and his power to make progress and search for humanistic final solutions to mankind's problems. Modernists were looking for theories that were, in their opinion, comprehensive and absolute, and could explain any phenomenon. But from 60s onwards, and after disasters left behind by modernity, intellectuals and artists were hopeless of any kind of super theory, and well knew, ultimately, fascistic consequences of these theories. It was in this period that a philosophical movement called post-structuralism with philosophers such as Jacques Derrida, Julia Kristova, Roland Barthes, Michel Foucault emerged, that using the construction brought to daylight the totalitarian and repressive nature of even the most avant-garde of the modernist modes of thought, and showed that any theory is nothing but a narration, and that there is no super narrative that has objective preferences to all other narratives as well. Following this way of thought, postmodern art doesn't care about super narrative and definitive single styles that were the precious fruits of genius artists. Instead, they are interested in mixing narratives. For them, all the narratives before, be modernist or classic, be serious high art or mass media low art, all is the same. It should be noted that this reference to former narratives lacks the serious tone of the original narratives. Instead, they are playful, almost a mockery or satire of what deemed to be very serious in the past. Another feature of postmodern art that is the result of the death of the single genius powerful author is intertextuality. Postmodern artists believe that there is no unique style anymore, so they easily and sometimes rudely combine the accomplishments of past artists in their own work. Every postmodern work is full of countless references to other medias such as cinema, television, radio, literature, advertisement, painting, fashion, and even the daily lifestyle of people of a specific time and place. Of course, we should be aware that intertextuality has always existed in art, since every work of art is based on works of art before. But this intertextuality in former works of art was hidden, was not on the surface. But here, in postmodernity, artist deliberately reveals other texts that make up his montage text. Whatever we said about postmodern art, can be noticed more or less in every Wes Anderson movie. But French Dispatch, which contains a mad dose of different narratives, may be his most postmodern or postmodernly sophisticated film. Before we dive into analyzing its section, it's worth mentioning that countless and fast-paced dialogues of the film are untranslatable, since the tone that each character uses points out to a specific culture and narrative that the film is trying to refer to. So if you're not an English-speaking audience, try watching the movie with English subtitles. Films of Anderson utilize familiar theme, and these themes are even narrated similar to the way we have heard or seen them before. But he goes one step forward in French Dispatch, and by dividing the film into five sub-narratives, multiplies his range of style mixing into five. Now, he has five chances in a single movie to make a coherent form, out of mixing narratives and styles. All of the reports are done by top-notch and elite reporters. In every number, there are expert articles on every field, social, political, artistic, and etc. A magazine such as this is postmodern template in itself, allowing for different narratives with no common ground to appear together. The magazine office, its editor, and its reporters are caricature of what we expect them to be. Snobby, serious, hardworking, and experts on their own respective fields. But these features gather in a satirical way, so French Dispatch establishes the stone from this beginning, serious yet funny, wholly based on what we've learned from reality, but as far from reality as possible. Everything seems to have its defined meaning, yet everything is ironic. In other words, the film establishes itself as a postmodern work of art from its first scene. Shrink the masthead, cut some ads, and tell the foreman to buy more paper. I'm not killing anybody. Wes Anderson, in employing every aspect of pop culture, it also implies many nostalgic moments that are sure to awaken some forgotten 
but well alive memories from the past. If this doesn't work on you, Anderson also masterfully employs the techniques classic cinema used to engage audience, create sympathy toward characters, and make us fall in love with them. Anderson's view on postmodernity is not of a critical nature, so he tries to abolish the audience's distance from the story whenever possible, exactly by using these methods. He loves his characters, or to put it better, he loves characters he had experienced before as an audience and is giving an homage to them. You can sense this love from the first moments of the film and successfully fall in love yourself and thus be emotionally engaged. First story, The Cycling Report. This part is based on archetypes of capricious and pessimist reporters. Reporter just goes on giving negative views on every aspect of beautiful city of Ennui. We see reporters and reports like this all the time in real world. In this funny adaptation, this highly critical reporter, serious and worried about environment, cycles through city to inform people of the dark and unseen parts of the city. Postmodern tone is clearly visible here. A serious set of news are delivered in a comic style. This ironic and satirical tone foreshadows all other reporters as well. After receiving the host, marauding choir boys, half drunk on the blood of Christ, stalk unwary pensioners and seek havoc. Second story, the concrete masterpiece. This one is narrated through an art critic who is giving a presentation of the masterpiece in a conference room. This story is based on myths about genius and trouble artists whose trouble and pain are what composes art and gives no value whatsoever to money and social status and often engages in chaotic behaviors and love escapades. There are also lots of references to public views on modern art, aristocracy of high art culture and rituals of art dealers. It takes all these and combines them in the form of a passionate love story, kind of which we have seen many times before. Nonetheless, it still has the power to engage our emotions. It is almost like a miracle that how a caricature of character such as the artist, Mr. Rosenthaler, is capable of invoking the most precious emotions. Ouch. That hurts me. The cruelty of it. The cold-bloodedness. The in-depth analysis of this segment suggests that the miracle is the work of the crazy, genius artist behind the camera. Mise-en-scene on this segment and further directional techniques which themselves require an in-depth analysis show that Anderson incorporates techniques or to articulate better cinematic language that is proven to create emotional, poetic scenes. This segment about the poetic love of an artist makes the most poetic segment of the film, a classic love story brought to you in the most postmodern way possible. It's a wholesome home. Third story, Revisions to a Manifesto. This segment is based on revolutionary counterculture of 60s France and all the humanistic and revolutionary stories told about it. Anderson uses all the features contributed to a revolutionary French student by the pop culture, youngsters who will revolt against anything, full of passion and love, intellectual gestures without the ability to write a manifesto without typos. Mrs. Crimmins, I écrit ça. Polished it. Certain passages. And of course, as a postmodern work of art, it has some points to make about an objective, neutral narrative by the reporters. I should maintain journalistic neutrality. The genius of this part is that by satirical portrayal of once deemed serious political gestures, Anderson shows that all this seriousness is nothing but a game of love. Love is what mankind needs, and love is the main reason, or should be the main reason, of all the social, political, and cultural struggles of mankind. And only a postmodern work of art, such as this one, that has relinquished itself of any old prejudice grand narrative, can by satirically portraying grand narratives get to points we have missed because of them. Stop bickering. 
Go make love. Je suis vierge. Fourth story, the private dining room of the police commissioner. This part is an exciting and strange mishmash of cooking programs, police stories, noir genre, and comic books. This segment probably makes the first ever narrative, which involves a cooking stop reporter who is a familiar figure of pop culture in a crime story, which is itself very familiar and even uses genre cliches and still ends up being unique. To your satisfaction? Of course. Of course. Here, Mr. Wright, a food journalist, the best of its kind, a satire of acclaimed remember French food journalists who look at food as a piece of poetry, are snobbish and have a unique set of vocabulary. Protagonist of this segment, Mr. Wright, is the exact reincarnation of such a figure. But his story is a strange one, in which food is only a theme around multiple other themes, which in no way are related to the art of the taste. This segment is the example of what we said about French Dispatch, director taking style to the extremes. If you don't get shocked by seeing cooking in the middle of a shootout, you will be when the segment turns into an interesting homage to comic cartoons. But despite all the bombardment of different themes, this segment doesn't fail to create some awe-inspiring moments. Remember when Messer Wright says his own insignia on the jail that he himself, being a homosexual, was once confined in? And with this poetic reference, movie goes a full circle and comes back to Mr. Howitzer Jr., the deceased editor of French Dispatch, turning the picture into an obituary of gratitude to a loving and stick a father like boss. Thank you. No crying. We could conclude that Anderson's art is knowing all these countless references from different mediums of popular culture by heart and being able to mix them to create a coherent narrative. Just knowing a mastery in all these styles, narrative, references and mediums is big of an accomplishment. But only a great artist at his prime can combine them in such a fashion to not only make up a uniform output but also still engage audiences with narratives that components of them all of us are so familiar with. Detecting all these references requires a diverse experience with American pop culture, patience and multiple viewings. And be sure, there is no single frame in French Dispatch that doesn't contain a reference to something we know and love. So sit back and enjoy the legacy of a storyteller who turns contemporary stories into myths of our time. One more for the pleasure. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.